appreciate you, Lord God. Father, we thank you just for being God. Father, not just for all the wonderful things you've done for us, but Father, we thank you just for being who you are. Father, I thank you so much for another opportunity to minister to these, your sheep. Father, I thank you that the word of God, your word, will go forth unhindered by any satanic or demonic force in Jesus name father I thank you that after hearing this message today dreams will be awakened father I thank you that dreams deferred will be reestablished father I thank you that dreams that's been buried and forgotten about because of discouragement father I thank you that your people will be stirred up those dreams will be stirred up and as a people they everybody will pursue their purpose in you father Lord God, and I will be so careful to give you all praise, honor, and glory, for we ask and receive in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen. So praise God. Thank you for coming. Thank you for tuning in. And today we are going to talk about you can make it if you don't quit. Because one of the things that I, I understand, and I'm starting to realize more and more and more, that Satan is not after your things. He doesn't care what kind of house you live in. He doesn't care what kind of car you drive. His whole purpose is to steal the word of God from you to keep you from being effective and to make the word of God of none effect. And if he can do that by stopping you and by stopping your purpose, then his job is done. You can live in a mansion uh, that, that covers an entire corner. As long as you are not fulfilling your purpose and fulfilling the word of God and your pur the, the God's purpose in your life, he doesn't care. So what I want to talk about today is you can make it if you don't quit. And I know I've said this over and over and over again, so I'm going to say it again. I'm going to take my time today and I'm going to try and not get so excited that I go all over the place and I start talking fast. I'm going to try to take my time so that you can hear what I'm saying and you can get this because unfortunately there are a lot of people out there today, a lot of God's people who have allow, allowed their dreams to just become deferred or they are to the point that they're dusty. Where today, after this message, you're going to be encouraged to get those dreams off the shelf dust them off and pursue your purpose and fulfill what God has called you to do. Because once you do that, you will be complete. So now let's go to Genesis 37, 19. We're going to talk about the different kind of dreamers and a, a dream and a vision versus just a dream that's deferred and, and never activated. Because the truth of the matter is everybody has potential. But potential is nothing if you never tap into it. Potential is nothing if it's just lying dormant. So we're going to talk about all of those things today and just kind of tapping into those dreams and tapping into that, to that potential so that you can fulfill the calling that God has on your life. Now, Genesis 37, 19. And they said one to another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. Behold, the dreamer cometh were words spoken by Joseph's brothers. Such words are spoken by many people, sometimes in counterpart of somebody who, who is always building and building castles in the, in the sky or in the air, but they never accomplish anything. Such, per, such persons are, become a dreamer. You know, I can remember back in, I think I may have been in middle school, high school, something like that, and Michael Jackson came out with this song, Guess I'll, al guess I'll Always Be a Dreamer, Dreaming My Life Away, Dreaming My Life Away. That person, that's just somebody who dreams and they talk about it would be nice to do this, it would be nice to, be go, to go there, it would, not, it would be nice if I would get up and do this, but they never do anything. And then... The same words, however, can be spoken respectfully of a person who dreams a dream and makes that dream come true. Now, with Joseph, there was contempt. Behold, the dreamer cometh. Now, the same words are spoken with excitement. 
behold, the dreamer cometh. So what I want to do is I want to look at the story of Joseph. And I want to look at his dream and how he was handled and how he was dealt with. See, because what, now let me give you just a little history. Joseph dreamed a dream of shocks of wheat. And basically the wheat represented he and his brothers. And the shocks of wheat were bowing down to one shock of wheat. The shocks of wheat that were bowing down were his brothers. The shock of wheat that they were bowing to was Joseph. Well, Joseph got all excited about it, and, and he didn't keep this to himself, nor did he tell people who would encourage him in that. He ran, he told his brothers. Now, mind you, Joseph was his father's favorite. He was the baby, the youngest. So when he ran this and told his bro this to his brothers, they weren't that excited about it because they didn't like him so much anyway. And we're going to look at that. We're going to look back at uh, Genesis 37. And this time we're going to read 19 through 27. And they said one to another, behold, the dreamer, this dreamer cometh. Come now, therefore, and let us slay him and cast him into some pit. And we will say some evil beast hath devoured him. And we shall see what will become of his dreams. And Reuben, thank God for Reuben. At least he didn't want to kill him. And Reuben heard it, and he delivered him out of their hands and said, Let us not kill him. And Reuben said unto them, Shed no blood, but cast him into this pit that is in the wilderness, and lay no hands upon him, that he might rid him out of their hands to deliver him to his father again. And it came to pass, when Joseph was come unto his brothers, that they stripped Joseph out of his coat, his coat of many colors that were on him. And they took him and cast him into a pit, and the pit was empty. There was no water in it. And they sat down to eat bread, and they lifted up their eyes and looked, and behold, a company of Ishmaelites came from Gilead with their camels bearing spicery and balm and myrrh, going to carry it down to Egypt. And Judah said unto his brethren, What profit is it if we slay our brother? and conceal his blood. Come, and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh. And, the, and his brother and his brethren were content. In other, words, the, in other words, the other brothers agreed. So now here we have a brother who's just dreaming and excited about his dreams. And he decides to tell his brothers about his dreams in, in excitement. And upon telling them, they grew more and more angry with him. And again, they didn't like him much anyway. And they decided, we're not going to kill him. We're going to throw him into a pit. And then later on, they decided, okay, well, let's get him out of the pit and let's just sell him. And basically what they did, they sold him into slavery. Now, I, here, here's the thing. I know oftentimes we're told, you know, when you have a dream or when you have a vision, don't tell anybody. I don't agree with that. I think you have to be careful to whom you tell, but I also think that sometimes it's good to face your criti critics. I think it's good to tell your critics something regarding your dreams because, A, you'll learn that nobody can stop your prayers. You'll also learn that if you're in fear, that will help you break out and break through fear because in the end of the day, your fear will destroy whatever your dream is anyway. So you can't allow fear to, 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 to take root. So regarding your dreams and visions, you know, face your critics, but you also want to talk to people who believe in you. It's good to tell and talk to others who also have visions, who are not in dreams, who would not be jealous, but they're going to pray for you. So basically they said, his Joseph brother said, we're going to do away with this fellow and this dream he had of our bowing down to him. Now, what does this have to do with today? Well, let's look really quick at Acts chapter 2, and we're going to read verses 17 through 18. Acts chapter 2, verses 17 through 18.
And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. God has spoken to every one of us at some time in our lives about our purpose, about his plan for us, about his, his craftsmanship and what he created us to do and what he created us to be. He has given us dreams and vision. He has given us things to accomplish for him. I just want to inspire you today to get a hold and take a new hold of your dream. I want you to pull it off the shelf, dust it off, and move on. Now, I want you to think about this because a lot of times, uh, I, you know, I've said this before and I say it again. We read the Bible as if it's some, you know, fictional novel. It's just, it, it's just no, it's nothing, nothing's about it true. And we really don't like to read the Old Testament when the New Testament clearly tells us to use the Old Testament as an example. And I'm telling you, if you would get in there and start studying the word and find people whose lives are, seems parallel to yours, if God did it for them, He'll do it for you. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He changes not. He did it then. He'll do it again. So I want you to think about it. Think about how Joseph must have felt. You know, he's all excited about his dreams. He go and he talked to his brothers. In his mind, he wasn't thinking about, oh, well, I'm the best. You guys are going to bow down to me because I'm great. I'm wonderful. He's simply this little boy who's thinking, wow, I'm a leader. And God has shown me that I'm a leader. And because I'm a leader, y'all are going to bow down to me. So he's talking to them. And they now, now they throw him in a pit. Just wonder how he must have felt. And then think about while he's waiting in the pit, he doesn't know. He doesn't really know the plan. He doesn't know if he's going to be killed. He doesn't know if he's going to be sold. What he does know is he's in this dark pit. There's no water, there's no food, and the, and the guys that he's supposed to be the closest to, his brothers, are the ones who put him in there. Now, just imagine that. Now, and so now, basically, he's thinking, okay, now I had this dream that they're supposed to be bowing down to me, but instead of bowing down to me, they throw me in a pit. Not only that, but after they sell him, now, instead of anyone bowing to him, Joseph is working as a servant in Egypt. Now imagine what he must be thinking. He's thinking, wow, what a dream. I'm supposed to be a leader. I am supposed to have my brothers, if nobody else, bowing down to me. But instead, I'm working here in Egypt as a servant. So now you have Joseph working as a servant in Egypt, suddenly he's lied on and he's thrown in, in prison. He's in prison based on false charges. So now you have somebody who was thrown in the pit by his brothers, sold into slavery. As he's working as a servant, basically his boss's wife lied on him. So now they've thrown him in prison for something that he did not do. I, I think that's a bad day. So now what's going on now? Joseph, is, Joseph decides with all of this and through all of this, I'm going to do the honorable thing. That's character. And see, that's what we have to do. When challenges come and when situations come, we have to decide, you know what, come what may, they can lie on me, they can throw me in prison, they can do whatever it is they feel like they need to do. But at the end of the day, I don't understand what's going on, but I trust God. And that's what Joseph did. He trusts God, he, did, he continued to do the honorable thing. He didn't understand, but he continued to do the honorable thing. At this point, I just believe his dreams were shattered, but he kept believing God. He didn't understand the chain of events, but he knew he could trust God. He remained true to God, although 
He was a prisoner in a foreign land. His dream became obscure in the Egyptian dungeon. In fact, some Bible historians believe more than a decade passed before all this even became a reality. Then about 13 years after Joseph entered Egypt as a slave, he stood in Egypt as prince, I'm sorry, as prime minister controlling storehouses. God had warned him to stock with food. Imagine that. Imagine telling your brothers about a dream. They, they initially they wanted to kill you, but instead they decided to throw you in a pit. Then when they, de they decided not to kill you, they decided to sell you into slavery. Now you're working in Egypt as a servant and you're lied on, so you're thrown in, in, in prison. Now, 13 years later, you have been elevated to prime minister. Basically, you're over the finances in that entire country. That's promotion, and that's God. Now, in the meantime, his brothers had to flee from their country due to famine. They were hungry, and they came into Egypt. Then they bowed down before Joseph. They didn't even recognize him. He knew them, but they didn't recognize him at all. Now, I could talk about forgiveness right there, but based on his actions, I think we've already decided that he's an honorable man. So based on his actions, forgiveness is present. So we already know that. So let's stay focused on the topic, which is because all I'm trying to tell you is you can make it if you just don't give up. So basically, this happened just like God gave it to Joseph, but it was not easy. And this is what we must understand. It's not just because God gives you a vision, just because God gives you a dream, that does not mean that Satan is going to back up now and all of his cohorts are going to stop and back up now and say, well, we may as well give up. You know, after all, God gave him a vision. God gave her a dream and they're going to move on. So we may as well leave them alone. No, that's when everything evil is going to break loose. And that's when you have to know that you're on the right track. And if you just keep going, if you just don't quit, if you don't cave in, give up and quit, you're going to make it. That's all Joseph did. He just remained honorable. He just went through all that. Can you imagine 13 years after being told that you were, people were going to bow down to you, your brothers were going to bow down to you, 13 years passed, you go through a pit, you go through slavery, you go through all of these things. And yet you remain honorable because you know in the end you're going to win. So you can't cave in. That's what I'm saying. Just don't quit. If you don't quit, you'll make it. And if you don't quit, you'll win. Joseph could have given up. He could have quit and the dream would have gone down with him. And then God would have had to look around for someone else to fulfill what he wanted done. So now, how would, how would you feel if you know God has called you to do a particular work? Because what, what you got to understand is when God calls you, when God appoints you, when he anoints you to do something, nobody else can do it but you. But if you choose to not move out and do what God has called you to do, he has no choice but to choose somebody else. And I just believe that if you sit around and you don't take hold of your dreams and you don't execute your vision and you don't execute the plan. I believe that when God selects somebody else and you see somebody else functioning in the office that you were called to function in, I think that you will know it. I think that you would not be able to deny that's what I was called to do. And I didn't do it. And now God has had to call somebody else. But what did you do? I don't know. Maybe you got caught up in all the advice of people who care about you. Because, see, every time somebody doesn't agree with you, it doesn't mean that they're being a critic. It doesn't mean that they are, they, you know, that they, they're, dis they're jealous or they, they just want to discourage you. Sometimes they just don't know any better. I, I had somebody recently tell me, well, you know, Veda, and, and you have to understand and see the perspective 
that a person is talking to you from. And this individual was talking to me from the perspective of having known me in corporate America. This individual was talking to me from the perspective of having known my work, having known my work ethic, having known uh, my success and all the things that I accomplished and how well I did. So that person was speaking from that perspective. So they could not relate or understand, okay, well, you're doing this maybe, you know, just maybe you need to do something else or maybe you need to do this and then kind of, but see what people don't understand, ministry is not a career move. Ministry is a, this is what God has called me to do, move. So my response was in love because I knew I knew the person's heart. I knew exactly where they were coming from and I knew what they were trying to do. They, they feel like I had all these talents that I were allowing to go to waste when I could be making a whole lot of money. So my response was, you know, I understand what you're saying. And I even heard you when you said this and I and I and I get that. But my ministry is doing exactly what it's supposed to do. I'm not discouraged. I'm not upset. I'm, I don't feel like at this point I'm, there should be billions and billions and billions. I am fine. It's doing exactly what it's supposed to do, and, I, and I'm good with that. I don't despise small beginnings because I know the latter shall be great. And that's the thing about doing the honorable thing. See, when you're doing what God has called you to do, what the, the things around you, it doesn't matter. And I told this person, I said, here's the thing. I've known for a long time what God, is, what God has appointed me to do. I've known for a long time my calling in life. I just know that this time God was ready for me to put legs to this vision and move it. And so it was time for me to start executing that plan, and I could not delay that. I could not, I'm not even sure that I hadn't already delayed it. So I just explained to them, I said, so I, I understand what you're saying. I understand where exactly where you're coming from. And I hear your heart in this, but you trust me. I, I got this. I, I know exactly what God has called me to do. And I don't doubt that. Not, so I, I couldn't, I could go on and on and on about that. Because see, I know that you've dealt with that too. I know that you've had people to come to you and say, well, you know, you have this degree, you have that degree, you function in that office, you function at that career, you've done well with this, you've done well with this. Are you sure? Well, see, that's when you got to know. Oh, I'm sure. I know what God has called me to do. So it doesn't matter. Say what you want to say. Do what you want to do. You know, oftentimes we get so caught up in day-to-day -day living. We get so caught up in, our, in whether it's in corporate. And I have nothing against corporate. I have nothing against anybody's career choice. But you cannot allow that to separate you from the love of God. You cannot allow that to separate you from your time with God. You cannot allow that to separate you from your purpose and your calling and your vision and what God has specifically chosen for you to do. You just can't do it. You've got to step out and you've got to move on. And you've got to do what God is calling you to do. That's why so many people are just miserable because they have these dreams. The dreams are deferred. They don't know what to do. They're getting discouraged. They are, they're, they're feeling downtrodden. They don't know which way to turn. Well, I'm telling you, if you don't quit, you're going to win. All you have to do, get that dream, get that vision off the shelf, dust it off and execute the plan. God has already made the plan. All you got to do is follow the plan, follow the blueprint. I said all of that to say, <laughs> don't give up on your dream. Now let's turn to Habakkuk chapter 2, and we're going to read verses 2 and 3. Habakkuk, that's right before Zephaniah and right after Nahum. Nahum, I think. Yeah, right after Nahum. Or just go to the table of contents. So Habakkuk chapter 2, 2 and 3. And the Lord answered me and said, 
write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. What is it? The vision. Write it down. Make it plain. If God gave you a vision, he will make provision. Don't get caught up in, well, God, you told me that this is going to happen. Where are my friends? I can't believe this person is standing by me. I can't believe this person is supporting me. Because I'm going to tell you right now, when you are going through things or when you have decided to step out into your vision, nine times out of ten, the people or the persons or the person who you thought was going to be there, the person who you thought was going to support you, that's not your person. That's not the person that's going to support you in this. That's not the person who's going to necessarily understand this. That's not the person who's going to be there for you in this. So you have to recognize that God is your source, and all you need is favor with one person. And because one word from God can change the whole situation, one person, one person, you only need one person person and God knows who that is so see you worrying about the wrong thing all you got to do is focus on the vision focus on the purpose focus on the dream focus on what direction in which you should be moving and do that and as you step out you know how the Bible talks about the word of God being a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path I see that as this as long as you're standing still you have a lamp right around your feet and you don't really need a whole lot of light. All you need to do is see right where you're standing. Well, guess what? Where as you walk out and as you step out, then suddenly it, the word of God becomes a light unto my path. In other words, the more I step out, the more I will see, the more everything opens up. And then you just continue down the path. Everything's light. No, but you got to have the faith that I don't have to know what the next move is going to be. All I got to do is move and trust God. I don't have to know what the next turn is. All I have to do is just keep moving and turn and trust God. And God is there. He's your fore God. He's your hind guard. God has your back. So all I, what I want you to get from this is if you don't quit, you'll make it. If you don't cave in, if you don't stop, if you don't give up, you will win. So remember, and the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run and readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. So wait upon the Lord and again I say, wait, they that mount, if, if you wait upon the Lord, he will renew your strength. You will mount up, uh, you will mount up with wings as eagles. You will walk and not faint. You will run and you won't grow real weary. And if you do, just keep running. If you do, just keep walking because the key is to not quit. We have too many Christians quitting. We have too many people of the faith. Just just dropping out, just fainting, just deciding it's just too difficult. It's not going to be easy, but it's going to be worth it. It may not be easy, but in the end, all the growth, all the development, it's going to be worth it. Just that closest relate, just that close relationship with God and just knowing that you are doing what God has called you to do. So I just want to encourage you. Don't cave in. Don't quit. You can make it if you just don't quit. God bless you. I love you. Thank you so much to all of our sponsors. Thank you, for, thank you to everybody who's decided to support Established Heart Ministries. We appreciate it. We love you. And God bless you. And I will see you next week. Amen. Praise the Lord.